Most of you who would have some idea about women's rights and women's movements in the US would know that abortion has been a major issue there because US has a large number of very conservative, uh, strong Christian voices which oppose abortion of any kind at any stage. They believe that a fetus once conceived is a living organism and it is a life. They call it a potential human being or an unborn human being. And they believe that women have no right to terminate those pregnancies at any point. And it does not matter if the woman was raped and that was how the uh, fetus was conceived. It does not matter if it came out of uh, incest. It does not matter if the woman could probably die if they gave birth. Though all those questions are set aside because it is believed that the human life inside the womb is in itself a life and when you terminate it, you're essentially committing murder, which they believe is therefore a sin. Now, um, about 50 years ago, there was a landmark judgment called Roe versus Wade and many people would know about it. That judgment essentially made it legal for women to go and get an abortion until the 28th weeks, week or seven months. Now, what does, did that do? That in essentially made it easier for women to access abortion because you know that when you, even if you make abortion illegal, there would be illegal clinics, there would be midwives who would, uh, uh, who would perform these abortions of fetuses. And often this would lead to huge health hazards to uh, pregnant women. And what they did was that this got rid of large scale teenage unwanted pregnancies, pregnancies where women were forced to have children by abusive husbands, pregnancies caused by rape or sexual assault. And that gave women the right and choice over their bodies. It made it equal for women in workplaces, in society in general. They had the right to decide what they will happen to their body. That, as you know, has been overturned by a recent US Supreme Court judgment. I'm not going to go into the details of what it means for women's rights, for feminists, for women in general in the conservative states, which will immediately, and some of them have already done it, ban all kinds of um, abortion. Uh, there are people who know better than me and they'll be able to give much more details. I'm going to only look at certain signs that this brings here and the dangers of the language of democracy, of populism. Because what is this judgment really saying? The judgment essentially overrules Roe and Wade on legal grounds, not on the ethical ground of whether a fetus is a living human being or not. It says, that Roe versus Wade said that there's a constitutional right to privacy that women have. And that constitutional right to privacy allows women to take a decision as to whether they're going to terminate their pregnancy or not, as long as a fetus is not viable or does not become a viable human being. And uh, in Roe versus Wade, the court decided that is 28 weeks. Over a period of time, <clears throat> scientific evidence has brought that down. Uh, to about 22 years, uh, 22 weeks in some places, or even 20 weeks, as in in India <clears throat> in, and in some parts of Europe. But even there, there have been cases where there could be delay in uh, recognizing that there could be health hazards to the mother, where with the consent of doctors, the termination is allowed in some other countries. Now, what is the ground on which the Supreme Court is saying that Roe and Wade has to be overturned? They're basically saying that this judgment was faulty right from the beginning, right? It was faulty right from the beginning because there is no constitutional right to abortion. The abortion, the constitution does not talk about abortion and American history and tradition and custom has not been taken into account to decide this judgment, to, uh, to come to this conclusion when the Supreme Court ruled in Roe versus Wade. And what, what is again the Supreme Court essentially saying now? It is saying that it is not the court's place to make these decisions. These decisions are to be left to individual states, their legislatures, it's to be left to their lawmakers based on what people decide 
and those lawmakers will decide what is relevant for their state, what is the history of this state, what are the customs of this state and what is the uh, reasonable liberty that any human being can have including women. Now very clearly the Supreme Court's decision is in the name of democracy. It is saying that the people must convince each other and through that convincing process whoever wins they elect representatives and the ele elected representatives then pass laws and it should be let left to individual states. And it says there's nothing in uh, the constitution, in fact the constitution does not uphold this. It also says that there is no way, there's no scientific or any way for uh, the state to decide at what point it's going to intervene to decide that this is a living being. It said that Roe versus Wade uh, had decided without any justification that 28 weeks is the issue. New evidence shows that it could even be 12 weeks when the fetus has a certain kind of uh, existence as a human being. So what is it? It's arbitrary and therefore there is no line where the state can decide. And even if the state decides, it's not for the courts to decide. As it says that the court, it was almost like a hammer of the court, Supreme Court to pass it across the board, across all states and that is being removed. And if now all 50 states decide to allow abortion, then good, let them do it through their legislative process, through elections, through voting. This is the populist argument that is now emerging along with neoliberalism everywhere. That the people want it and therefore we should have it. If the people want a Christian nation, a Hindu nation, then that is what we have to have. There can't be any abstract liberal humanist values any longer that have to be upheld. The Supreme Court argues that there is no connection between abortion and contraception and same-sex marriage the US Supreme Court and it says that it's only abortion which actually ends a life but who says what if we say that a sperm itself or an ovum itself are forms of life then contraception has to be banned what if we say that uh, when a woman decides to have a child even when doctors say that if you had tried to have this child you're going to die is the doctor committing murder? Is it the doctor assisting suicide? That is the question the court does not answer. Why is it that pregnancy which could come to term in which a woman dies in childbirth is okay? And the court does not stop it because why is that not considered suicide? So these are clear precedents that have been set and there's a reason to believe this. There's a reason to believe that there is a deep state that has operated and operates in all neoliberal regimes now and they are increasingly uh, uh, uniting the capitalist class with conservative right-wing elements to suppress democracy in the name of democracy they are doing it by saying this is the people's voice we saw what happened during Donald Trump's regime what Donald Trump successfully did was that he appointed three conservative judges to the Supreme Court and that has been the turning point by Roe versus Wade which was considered to be almost written in stone never to be questioned has been overturned and it's important that Justice Alito who's written this particular judgment in 1985 according to the New York Times report uh, when he was giving an opinion to the Reagan administration on imposing restrictions on abortion uh, there were two cases in which there were demands for restricting abortion and the Reagan administration, Republican administration, a conservative administration wanted to side on the way of anti-abortionists and it is interesting that Justice Alito at that time a law officer, a lawyer in the Justice Department, just 35 years old, had said that go slowly. The sense of what he had said was that go slowly, uh, we have to gradually nip at Roe versus Wade, cut, slowly cut it down till the Supreme Court is ready to overturn it. And that is what has happened. After 50 years, there's a conservative majority in the Supreme Court by which justices have overturned something that had given huge rights to women. And that overnight is going to take away those rights in the land of the so-called free, in the so-called land of the free, 
in the so-called land of democracy, women's rights are being snatched away from them in the name of a few cells. Why? Because of religious conservatives who believe that abortion is a sin. That's the show today. Keep watching News Click. Subscribe to our channel. Like this video. Share it as well.